CataractCoach.com, a resident performs stop and shop. So we have a senior resident here who does a great job with this technique. So we're going to show you the sculpting part of it and the nucleus removal in real time, and then we'll speed up the end of the case here. So and again, beautiful Rex is about five, maybe five and a half millimeters in diameter. Good hydro dissection. You can tell the tripan blue dye was used. That's good. And the nucleus looks, A, it spins. I like it. So let's learn the technique. This resident has done about 200 cataract surgeries. So the technique here is going to be pretty good. You can already see the draping is good. Lashes are sequestered away. The lid margin is tucked away as well. Look at the incision, the main incision there. Nice tunnel length. You can see the, the sides of the corneal stroma where the incision is made. That looks great. I like the paracentesis placement too. So this is already a resident who has learned quite a bit. This is good. So now for the groove, let's talk about some parameters. You don't need to have a whole lot of flow. You don't need to have a lot of vacuum. So certainly less than 100 millimeters of mercury for vacuum and maybe 25 cc's a minute for flow. So there's the first groove. Notice how the groove started just inside that uh, subincisional capsular axis and the angle of the probe changes. And now he goes flatter and, and then straightens it out. And that looks great. So again, setting up his zoom and his focus for a little bit better view down on the groove. So now the nucleus is being sculpted nicely. The sleeve of the phaco tip is hitting the side, so maybe time to widen up the incision. Yep, in fact, there it is. Notice how the eye stays in primary. Look, those Purkinje images stay right in the center. That's because the resident is moving his hands to keep the eye in primary. So pivot your hands, pivoting in that incision. And so again, that groove is deeper in the center and then a little shallower toward the periphery. And nice, good, long grooves. So now lifting up to not go too deep in that one spot. So very nice. Now you can judge the depth of this groove by the, when you start to see the red reflex shining through the bottom of the groove, you can also judge by comparing it to the phaco tip. And you can say, well, how deep is it compared to that tip? So now that groove looks pretty good. Look, there's a little bit more red reflex in the center, way down deep. Now, both instruments, importantly, are placed deep within the groove and pushed apart. And look at that nice separation. And this is probably a modest, maybe three plus nuclear sclerosis. And really making sure that the halves fully separate. And now let's see what else is going on. A more rotation. Okay, I'll take that. And then rotating it to set, him up, set himself up for success. So now going to the chop mode. So higher vacuum, higher flow, buzzing in. And you can buzz in until you get a nice high vacuum level. And once that's accomplished, bring the piece out of the bag partially. So you can go around the or go around the equator here. There the piece comes up, going around the equator and chopping that piece off. Ah, pretty good. That's really, really quite good. So that little, little, little pieces can be removed. The remainder of this nuclear half can again be brought up and then chopped into smaller pieces again. And of course, remember the chop part's the harder part to learn. But again, at 200 cases, I think this resin's doing a really good job. And there's the chop again, and it splits. Beautiful. And notice the second heminucleus is still in the capsular bag. And then ideally operating here, closer to the iris plane, and not close to the endothelium. And I was here live for the surgery while this resin did it, and I can assure you that was the case. And so now removing more of that nuclear piece. Again, really nice how the eye stays in primary. He's pivoting well in the incisions. Got to be a little cautious. Look at the phaco sleeve and look at the phaco needle in it. It's a little close to that one incision. So you should pivot the hand. You want to have that needle. That's better. The needle should be in the middle of your incision so it gets cooled on either side. If you push up against the side of your incision, you can have direct heat going from that phaco needle, the friction, and it can burn the cornea. So this, again, he's drifting over there. You want to straighten that hand out a little bit more. Don't let that metal phaco um, needle be pushed up against the side of the incision. You can also minimize your risk later by using a good, uh, you know, parameter such as a duty cycle on a pulse mode, a lower duty cycle, less than 50%. But certainly a good thing just to stay in the center of the incision. Now here's the second half, rotating it around. And then now bringing it up. Let's see. 
We're going to rotate more, going to this side. Again, remember, not going in the middle of the nuclear piece, but rather the end, because it's much easier to bring up one end. As when that one end comes up, now the high vacuum's holding it, and now it can be chopped. And that looks like a pretty reasonable chop. I like it. So definitely a technique you want to master. Certainly, I think every resident who works hard enough at the end of your residency, you can do a nice stop and chop technique. You should be able to do something of this level at around case 200, maybe 300 or so. This resident, I can tell you, is just about exactly at 200 cases. And this goes great, so pushing the nuclear pieces around. And remember, after you chop the one piece, you don't necessarily have to remove it. You can just, you know, sub-chop into more small pieces, whatever you like. And when the chop there is slightly incomplete, it's because you probably lost vacuum. So remember, we talked about there's a window in which you have only a little bit of time to chop. And so that's when the vacuum size. So now buzzing in, that's better. And now chop, that'll be a clean chop for sure. And there it is. Good split. And these can now just be emulsified. So total amount of energy placed in these eyes is relatively low. And with our modern viscoelastics and phaco power modulations, we can really protect that corneal endothelium and have patients with clear corneas on post-op day one. And that's an important thing. It really helps for patient satisfaction. You know, one of the most fun parts of cataract surgery is seeing the patients post-op, where all of a sudden they have such great vision and such a dramatic improvement for them. So you don't want patients to have all that corneal edema. So here at the end, nice taking his time, getting the pieces pushed forward. I like the use of that chopper there to bring the pieces in front. Remember, you want these nuclear pieces in front of your phaco probe, not underneath your phaco probe. So there it goes, and pushing the pieces around, taking your time. I like the slow motion here, meaning the resin's very cautious and just giving a little phaco energy at a time. And that's important because remember, right now, nothing is weighing down that capsule bag. There's that last fragment. Let's see if you can push it with the probe or I should retract your chopper. And that piece is going towards the pair because that's where the fluid outflow is. There it is. The last piece taking it down. And it's a beautiful result. So great job. Definitely watch this video. Study this video. You can learn how to do stop and chop. This is a good benchmark for you at about 200 cases. This is nice and clean. And remember, all the little details are great too. The eye stays in primary. The incision is good. The rexus is good. The draping is good. Everything is pretty good here. So... Keep up the good work. Let's finish up the case. I'll show you at super high speed just to go through it because I want to see at the end here what the Sorexa size was. So I'm guessing about a five and a half. And um, to put that in there and compared to the optic, yeah. So that optic's obviously a six millimeter optic and that Rex is, is, is just about perfect. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching these videos. And remember to go to cataractcoach.com and sign up for a free daily email. We'll send you an email every day with a great video like this and other surgical pearls that'll make you a better surgeon.